Hello, and welcome to the virtual taste of the Rental Sales Gallery's Member Artists 2021 Spring Show. I'm Mark Tyndall, the Gallery Manager. The Portland Art Museum and Rental Sales Gallery recognize and honor the indigenous peoples of this region on whose ancestral lands the museum now stands. These include the Willamette, Tumwater, Clackamas, Kathlamet, Molala, Multnomah, and Watlala, Chinook peoples, and the Tualatin, Kalapoya, who today are part of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde and many other native communities who've made their homes along the Columbia River. We also want to recognize that Portland today is a community of many diverse native peoples who continue to live and work here. We respectfully acknowledge and honor all indigenous communities, past, present, and future, and are grateful for their ongoing and vibrant presence. This show is a tribute to Jennifer Zika, who was gallery manager for 21 years and sadly recently passed away. The gallery's community of artists, volunteers, staff and supporters, who she was at the heart of for all these years, miss her deeply and are keeping Jennifer and her family in our thoughts. I am honored to continue her legacy by presenting this beautiful and vibrant show of more than 150 works of art created by many of our talented member artists. Uh, the Spring Show is currently by appointment only, so if you want to come and view it, uh, please contact the Rental Sales Gallery. Uh, our information is on our website. Uh, when you come into the gallery, we encourage visitors to follow the path uh, set out using the arrows on the floor, and please ensure to uh, follow any social distancing and masking guidelines as may be required. Um, here we have an opportunity to have a little look at just some of the wonderful works of art that we have uh, on display here. And what immediately jumps out uh, on this wall, and indeed all the walls throughout, is the sheer rich variety that our artists uh, produce. Uh, we start with Keeney Rathbun's Dances with Trees. This piece is a 2D sculptural bas-relief carving, but framed here as you can see it. As we work our way along the wall here, we, we look at this beautiful oil painting by Ceci Colachon. She is an artist who works in the surreal and abstract bent, producing these brightly colored yet fantastically balanced pieces of art as we see here. Um, talking about abstracts, we have Eileen S. Kane's Turbulence here. I, this is personally a piece that I think is absolutely stunning. I love, love, love this bronze color here, just set against this blue background. It has such a feel of turbulent waters and the dynamicism of the seas, and it's a stunning piece. Above it, we go to something far, far calmer and very peaceful with it. This is Hydrangea Memories by Joan Metcalf. Joan has been a member artist at Rental Sales for, for many years, and her incredible mix of precisely painted uh, floral and tree pieces mixed in with this stunning use of metallic leaf makes her pieces incredibly distinctive. And I believe that she also has um, a range of items for sale in the museum shop currently. So that's something to, to check out on there. Below it, we have one of our gallery's most popular artists, consistently popular artists, and this is Anna Kodesh. And this piece is Baby Corgi. Anna specializes in these wonderfully whimsical uh, paintings of animals set against uh, brightly colored backgrounds. They are consistently extremely popular with our clients, and you can see why. It's a work that's just jam-packed with character, with life. And if anyone who's ever owned a corgi, I think you can agree, you'll recognize that expression looking up at you. Here we have a couple of pieces by Candace Primack, Ice Storm 1 and Ice Storm 2. Um, these are uh, painted pieces using a very rich technique, layers of uh, color, Candice works again in this sort of surreal, abstract uh, feel. Um, and this is a little bit of a departure in terms of the scale of these works. It's a little bit of a departure from what she's done previously, but it's something that we think looks absolutely tremendous in this space. Um, we continue looking at this wall with uh, Rowena Sunrise by Paul Zegers. Paul um, is one of is a relatively new artist to rental sales gallery, and he specializes in painting both landscapes and also urban city scenes. So he paints all across Portland and the Pacific Northwest area, producing, again, pieces that have this wonderful, often very soothing feel, and again, filled with 
the feel of the area that he is painting. Again, tremendously popular with, with our clients. Always a delight to have his works uh, in, in the gallery uh, here. Um, down here below, we've got a, a photo collage that has been created by Beth Kirschen. Uh, this is called New Affordable Housing. This is a piece that really rewards taking some time to look at it and pick out the details. Beth walks through the city of Portland with her camera, snapping photographs of often particularly the buildings, the billboards, the signage, things which catch her eye, and she creates in great and intricate detail these um, composited images of all these different scenes. In the case of this one, putting across perhaps a, a thoughtful message about affordability of housing, as she puts it in the title there. Um, the final piece I'd like to pick out from uh, this wall is Storm of Herstory by uh, Jennifer Gillia Cutshall. Um, Jennifer is, again, has been a member artist for a, a fairly short period of time here at Rental Sales Gallery, but her distinct works uh, using a mixture of painting and mixed media techniques. Again, this particular piece really jumps out to me as just a strong narrative and a strong sense of her feminine identity and the important place, and often greatly overlooked place, of women in history. And her storm of history, I think, is one that begins to rebalance and retell the tale, and we're delighted to have it here in the gallery as part of the Spring Show. Obviously, I've not been able to talk about every single piece, and I won't have a chance to do that throughout it, so this will be one very long video, but trust me that every piece in the gallery is worthy of some time and some viewing, and to any artists who I haven't spoken specifically about, I'm sorry about that, but we will celebrate you throughout and ensure that we do that. So we continue our look around the gallery with this beautifully put together and composed wall, showing, despite the incredible variety of work that we have amongst our member artists, how they can all sit together in real comfort and a really considered composition here. We start with Jessie Reno's Flowers Becoming Female, Jessie's work um, has often been particularly colorful. This one has a more um, limited palette, but it still contains the striking imagery and rich detail that his work is known for. Uh, sitting in the center of the wall, we have Brian Kramer's White Roses in a Glass. Brian is one of a number of still life artists who we have here at Rendell Sales Gallery. And this piece is immaculately painted you really feel like you could just go up to it and smell the roses. It's that beautifully composed. Um, we continue with uh, Wet Afternoon by Guy Gilray. Guy uh, is an artist who has recently returned to Rental Sales Gallery, so we're delighted to have his works be back on show here. I think anyone who's lived in the Pacific Northwest for a length of time can, uh, can really feel the, uh, the gray clouds and the damp feel of this painting so beautifully realized here. And he makes it a wonderful comp a uh, composition piece for uh, Shai Meredith's Affinity. Shai's works uh, have a rhythmic movement to them that is really quite beguiling to look at. And using the, uh, the, the gold paint on here really just emphasizes that dynamic feel that this work has. Beautiful, beautiful piece. And the whole wall has a fabulous uh, composition to it. So we continue now. Um, with uh, Indian Beach April by Andrea Benson. Uh, this is an encaustic piece. Andrea specializes in works like this, particular focus being on the Oregon coast and the stunning imagery associated um, with that. Um, the next work I'd like to pull out is Ken Kloss. And Ken, I feel like has a real affinity for and fascination with the many bridges that make Portland the city that it is, indeed, make, makes this bridge city. St. John's Bridge, Arches and Buttresses, the beautiful, beautiful work set in Cathedral Park, looking across the most, probably, to my mind, the most striking of the bridges here in Portland, and one that I have a, a great personal connection to. So this beautiful, beautiful little work here, superbly framed, capturing the real feel of that particular area. Color composition of it and the, the actual um, imagery itself, I think rather playfully and wonderfully runs up into Larry Olson's Bamboo Path, Kyoto, Japan. Um, I feel like the movement just flows up the wall here, flowing from the arches of the bridge into the standing bamboo of this photograph. The two of them together making a wonderful composition. 
from the green, we jump into the orange here. And this is Carolyn Cole and her piece Untitled, 71917. Carolyn has long been a member of the gallery. This is her 199th piece that we of hers that we've displayed here at Rental Sales Gallery. And these pieces, this one is acrylic on paper. Her use of color is simply sublime. You would think that with such a large number of colors on it that somehow the composition would not be balanced, would not have this feel of rightness to it, but Carolyn's pieces always have that beautiful feel and are consistent in striking works and exceedingly popular again with our, our clientele throughout. Up above, right at the top framing the wall, is Patty Bentley. Uh, Patty's work, Mount Hood from Hood River. It's a beautiful, um, a beautiful landscape with a real feel of the French Impressionists about it, but capturing the very distinct Oregon landscape as a result itself. And sitting next to it, another Impressionistic piece that again has a lovely, very regional feel to it. This is Wild Plum and Oak Tree by Sarkis Antikeagen. Sarkis is another one of our long-standing member artists, and his pieces, again, real impressionistic feel, capturing the light, the energy, and the natural world that is such a part of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we continue with Anton Pavlenko's Herman Creek and Jan Rimmerman's Morning Memory 3. These two pieces, again, so distinct, so different, but the colors just balance together really beautifully. And so one of the real treats of coming into rental sales gallery is you get to see so many different works, but yet which somehow beautifully sit together. And it just shows you that you can have great fun, really play with a variety of work. And I feel that's something that this gallery really does beautifully. So these two pieces and this little kingfisher on Jan's piece, just an absolute joy, filled with vibrancy, life, and real character in the work. Um, along here, we have some of the 3D pieces that our artists also do. Uh, I'd like to give a particular focus um, to this beautiful, beautiful uh, 3D porcelain sculpture created by Sinyi Huang. Sinyi's works, uh, she specializes in stunningly detailed and incredibly delicate feeling um, porcelain sculptures capturing in particular um, floral life like this one. So it's a beautiful little piece there. Very, very popular with our clientele again. Um, I'd like to give a bit of notice to uh, uh, Eileen Ike Kressel's uh, Heartfelt 1 and 2, a diptych uh, piece here. Beautiful colors, beautiful balance of the different works. Again, you, one of those works that you look at and rewards you the longer that you spend looking at it, seeing the detail jumping out um, from it. And finally, ending the wall here, we've got Blue and Bronze by Don Bishop. Don uh, is an artist who paints in a couple of different styles for us. He paints these wonderful dreamy landscapes, often uh, captured at sunrise or sunset, so just filled with hues of peaches and oranges and purples. And then he also does these like superbly sort of what feel like simplified abstracted landscapes, and this is a really fabulous example of his works we've got on the wall here. So, as you're going to see, fantastically composed wall, and a huge, huge shout out to the Mental Sales Gallery's volunteer team here. Um, without them, we not only could we not staff the gallery, we could not hang the shows that we do here. So many of these walls were designed, composed, and hung by the volunteers themselves. So, a huge tribute to them. Thank you. Could not do the work without them that we do here. Um, this might be my favorite wall of the entire uh, show that we've got. And I know you shouldn't play favorites, but it was the first one that we brought together. And it was one of those ones that just came together really beautifully. And I think looking at it, you, you see why. There's a fabulous, fabulous feel of all these different works captured on, on here. Right sitting in the center of it is another Paul Zegers, Poe Reflections. Uh, below it, we have Nancy Tung's African Bouquet, a floral piece where, again, the dynamic colors of the flowers just jump out and fills the whole space with their rich color and a sense, again, of, of the smell and of the beauty of the floral world with them. Um, we've got Richard Cutshaw's Beholden Apparition Number 2. Richard, 
and his wife Jennifer, two of our member artists. Not only do they give us works individually, they also um, work together on pieces, which they uh, share the making of and then submit. So they appear in three different ways here in the gallery, and we are delighted to represent um, the, this, uh, this couple uh, here. Um, two Kathleen Cocario pieces here, Biodiversity uh, Sandwater Life 1 and Biodiversity Sandwater Life 2, sitting here. Beautiful, beautiful pair of pieces uh, made together to showcase. And then finally, looking over here, we've got a wonderful seascape piece uh, called The Cove by Hazel Schlesinger. And above that, this little piece called uh, Within Reach by Anne John. Anne is a artist who specializes in the surreal and her pieces again, often deceptively simple on the surface, but filled with intrigue and curiosity the more that you look at them and you try to unpiece them as you go. Finally, I just want to draw attention above the door here. This work uh, is by Annie Meyer, Willamette Valley 2020. Annie does these glorious, simplified um, landscape images, just two colors, trees, but again, filled with depth, detail, and richness, and a truly rewarding work to have. Very popular artist here in the, in the gallery again because of this. So now we continue uh, with this wall here. This is one of the kind of, you call like the picture walls here, uh, sitting right behind the desk of the gallery. Um, Right at the top here, uh, next to the Annie Meyer work, we've got John J. Crusson above Green Fields. John's works, um, again, very consistent and very, very popular here. These landscapes that have this um, regimented, precise feel to them, beautiful, beautiful composition with balance of color, these kind of stacked landscapes that he creates and always framed in this, in this consistent way. Fabulous works, very, very well liked um, by all who see them here. Um, sitting down here, we've got uh, Robert Elon's Rich Passage, uh, Washington. This one, this is one that is really great fun, though the more that you move around it. It's this combination of glass and wood. And as you work your way around it, the texture of the glass makes the light refract, uh, refract and constantly change, giving it this beautiful sense of moving water or if you're lying on your back, looking up at the sky with the clouds moving across. Stunning work, deceptively simple, but utterly, utterly wonderful when you have it up on, on the wall. And finally, kind of the showpiece um, work on the wall here. Hawthorne Bridge by Mel Townsend. Um, Mel's works, um, she's increasingly been creating uh, numerous works of the many bridges of Portland presented in this semi-abstracted way. This one has been proven already very popular with uh, with visitors, some of who have already inquired about whether they could potentially have it, and with our uh, volunteers as well. And that's certainly a thing to bear in mind, is that if there's a piece that you see on the walls, yes, this is a rental gallery, the works will go, but they might not come back. So if there's one that you see that you really want, don't delay in getting in touch with us. Uh, we can potentially put it on hold for you if you get in touch, but if there's something that you love that you see here or on our website, please do make sure to, to get in touch and you don't, we don't want you to miss out on something that you might love. And here we continue with this um, bright red wall and the uh, striking works chosen to be part of it. Um, down here, we've got Where's the Needle? This is a coastal scene painted by Sidoni Caron. Sidoni um, is one of our very longest serving member artists. This is her 351st piece that we've showcased here in the gallery. She has a really wide variety of works that she does, um, ranging from landscapes like this to more um, urban scenes to pieces that are, live in the more sort of abstract impressionist um, variety as well. So beautiful piece, and delighted to have her here. Uh, above it, Barney Clicks's uh, Bamboo Impressions 3. Fabulous, fabulous piece, just filled with richness and texture. You just want to run your hands over it and it's very hard to resist from doing that. Uh, right in the middle here is an artist who is one that I think is doing pieces that are really quite unlike anything else I've ever seen. And this is uh, Jane Oxunas and her work Red Tree, Blue Tree. She works uh, specifically in oil pastels, producing these fabulous, slightly exaggerated, slightly surreal, just dreamlike feeling landscape views. And again, 
She's out and about in, in Oregon. You can see the, the vineyards up in the corner here. She's out and about in Oregon creating these fields that go beyond reality into something more dreamlike and beautiful with that. Um, finishing the, the wall here, we've got uh, Susan Comerford's Oregon garden scene. Lovely, lovely work, filled with the color, filled with the outdoor life that makes Oregon such a desirable uh, state. And beneath it, we've got Gary Anderson and Lost City. Gary has, uh, again, he's one of, like Sedoni, one of our very longest uh, working artists. He uh, based out of Washington now. This is his 363rd piece. And he now has been working for many, many years here, submitting works and submitting pieces like this. Again, a riot of color and energy and life, but somehow it all just sits together as a beautiful composition. So we continue um, moving around into the back of the gallery now. Um, we're gonna pick out pieces on this column and down these panels here. Uh, we start with a beautiful photograph, uh, Lauren Nelson's Fog Coast Range, Oregon. Um, Lauren's work is this dreamy, foggy, sort of very mysterious black and white photograph and absolutely fabulous as a consequence of that. Again, captures that real Oregon landscape sort of feel. Uh, another one of our photographers is here on the panel, um, Gloria Baker-Feinstein, uh, Yellow Bird by her. Fascinating piece, this. Uh, it is printed onto uh, aluminum, which is then mounted on maple board, giving it this wonderful 3D effect as a work. Such a striking piece. The colors just jump out as a consequence of that. Um, we also continue with actually another one of our photographers, Don Schwartz, and his waves of hills here. Wonderfully simple color palette does so much with the texture of it with such a simple group of group of colors and finally more doorlands fall in the wetland and it's just they were right in the middle of spring as we are it's always this remembrance that the one of the most beautiful times in the natural environment here in oregon is the fall as these colors turn to these beautiful beautiful burnt shades here let's continue back along the panels draw attention to a couple of pieces on here, we've got Margaret Short's uh, Journey of the Medlar. Margaret is uh, a nationally and even internationally recognized uh, still life artist, widely regarded as one of the best active ones in the country. So we're very proud to have her here. This piece is so resonant with kind of the classic feel of the still lifes, particularly the sort of Dutch still lifes of the uh, 17th centuries. These beautiful, beautiful lilies just so exquisitely captured the detail of them. It's one of those pieces that really re rewards you walking up to it and just soaking in the detail of it. Beneath it, fabulous abstract landscape here from Ted Olson called Red Desert. Ted's one of the newer artists here at Rental Sales Gallery, but he's already established a, a fine reputation with these deceptively simple um, landscapes using these two blocks of color, but also with a lot of texture and great feel to them. So, proven to be a very popular artist for ours, even in just such a short time that he's been with us. And finally, we have this striking work by Barry Johnson called The Last Circus. Um, Barry's works have this abstract expressionistic feel to them, full of dynamicism, movement. This color scheme of blue and red is so striking, it just leaps off the canvas here. And we're delighted to have this particular work in the gallery. We've got high hopes that it's one that will soon hopefully find a home and someone who loves it. Uh, looking over here onto the right, we have got uh, a few pieces in particular I'd like to draw attention to. Uh, Martha Fanschmidt and her Dusk Dawn, uh, another encaustic artist of ours. There's something so specific about the wax texture of encaustic. It's not like, it's simply unlike anything else. And again, rich use of a muted color palette and a, a feeling of texture, even on the smooth, smooth finish that, uh, that her works have. Um, and Paula Blackwell's Edge of Seventeen here. Again, a muted sort of feel of the color, but a paint, an, an encaustic painting. Looking at it, you see depth, detail. It feels like it's moving and pulsing with life. Really quite a beautiful, beautiful work here. Completing with uh, another Gloria Feinstein and Jean Gale's Patchwork Paradise. A lovely, lovely watercolor of uh, the Oregon landscape here. I'm gonna to move to the back wall uh, now, pick out a few pieces, uh, really sort of jump out. 
This one is Willamette Valley number 16 by Michael Satin. This fabulous feel again, has this sort of stunning stacked landscape kind of feel, very simplified uh, landscape. Right bang in the center of the wall is this delightful little piece called Hawk Moth by Ralph Davis. Uh, Ralph uh, is an artist who combines many different things, beautifully, precisely painted uh, animals from the natural world, often uh, Lepidoptera and hawks like this, hawk moths like this, uh, uh, mathematical equations presented in um, image form and also surreal landscapes as well. He packs so much detail into such tiny, tiny works, just filled with an incredible amount of joy in such a small piece. Talk about pieces filled with joy. Uh, Diana Lomé Hings, Glowing Where the Sun Rises. Diana just has this fabulous rainbow palette of colors, which she layers onto her works. Absolutely delightful, just so vibrant. And I think runs up so beautifully into Jean Thomas's Spillover 2, a diptych piece. It's one of those ones where you take that time, you study it, and you just feel yourself being sort of drawn into the abstracted landscape that she's creating there. Absolutely stunning on the, the pieces on the wall here. And we continue our circuit around the gallery here, just draw attention to Annegret Disterhef's uh, Libiati. Uh, this is a seriograph uh, print, stunning piece, such bold use of the blue and the amber-orange colors uh, together to create this real sense of life and movement. Very, very popular work. We've already, uh, in fact, this is the second time that she's brought this piece to us because we've sold the previous one that she had. So a real sign of the quality of the work on that. This panel, we've got a couple of pieces here. We've got uh, Dennis Hartley's uh, Meditation 2102 uh, here. Dennis's works filled with texture, filled with feel. Again, a very simple kind of color palette, but a great deal of depth to it. Really fabulous because of that. And above it, Break Time by Stephen Kekul. Now this piece always makes me think of Hopper when I, when I look at them. That's, it, it always has this feel of Edward Hopper about it. It's individual figures in somehow a real but dreamlike environment, just detail but simplicity, fabulously composed, a really wonderful balance of different images together. Uh, behind that, looking back the further panels as we go, we've got a striking digital photograph taken by Doug Adair here called Peruvian Skies, and just look at this landscape. It's a dream. You just want to be there when you see it. Um, Susie Cowan's Puget Sound and The Depth. Fabulous pair of companion pieces here. Um, superbly designed. This real sense of a window into an undersea world. Beautiful, beautiful. So much detail to them. You just want, again, to spend hours looking at these. And sat above them, another artist who creates splendid amounts of detail in very, very small works. And this is Chuck Bloom, Chuck E. Bloom's Dreams of Architectural Madness. This one, you just want to get as close as you can to it, and you want to see all of this detail of these strange tree houses in this surreal, yet beautifully realized, rich feeling environment. Chuck is an immensely popular artist of ours. These fabulous little pieces are an example of that. And finally, we go to the wall here, and we've got another Jane Oakshunas, and Stacey Lovejoy's Crowded Ballroom. Stacey Lovejoy uses uh, acrylic paints, creating these, again, undersea sort of feeling scenes, just packed with uh, incredible life, incredible detail, sense of real richness and movement. And again, another lovely Jane Oak Shunas piece called Another Country sat above it here. So we're getting towards the end of our little tour here around the Rental Sales Gallery. Um, one of our final walls here, I want to draw attention to uh, Kevin Fowles' freight train passing Wind Mountain. Uh, Kevin is another one of our landscape artists, and it's a real reoccurring theme amongst so many of our artists here, is this absolute love of the natural world and this love of the beauty of Oregon, which they capture and present in the artworks. Uh, Sarah Bousma is another artist who does that too. She works in watercolors and presents this fabulous piece called Outcropping here. She's got a very unique uh, style with watercolors, very singular and fabulous to be presenting them here. Um, we continue. This one is Fasai Street's Mix of Emotion. Uh, it's a photograph 
but you would look at it and not be absolutely sure what is the technique she's used here. Filled with color, movement, this is such a dynamic uh, piece, a real favorite of ours uh, here in the gallery. I also want to draw attention to uh, Mitch Fryfield's Style House Day. Beautiful, beautiful painting. Um, has this wonderful sense of, to me at least, it feels like California in the 1960s. I look at that and it is the image of LA that made it the most sort of desirable city on earth. And just look at the beautiful environment and how he's captured it in this work. A really, really wonderful, wonderful piece uh, to showcase here as well. And we come to the final wall of the show and some of the pieces I want to pick out from here. Right bang in the middle of it is this one by Susan McKinnon. It's complicated. Uh, Susan, another one of our abstract expressionist artists, dynamic work, a color palette of hers that I've not often seen before, but these reds and blacks and oranges filled with incredible just dynamicism, a beautiful, beautiful piece uh, there. Below it, uh, another work by Jesse Reno, uh, Resting Horse Under Rainbow Dreamcatcher. This is more traditionally what we're used to seeing with Jesse with his bright balance of colors as opposed to the, uh, the rather more uh, Spartan choices on the other works. So a lovely selection of his pieces that we've got on here. This one on here is Mirage Ranch by Shelley Garber. Uh, Shelley is, again, quite a recently arrived artist at Rental Sales Gallery, but has had great success recently with sales and rental, so we're delighted to be uh, showcasing her acrylic pieces here. And finally, Noriko Sugita's Peninsula, uh, a woodcut print, and just, just look at this wonderful composition of colors. It has this fabulous spring feel to it with the pinks, the blues, the greens. It is surreal and imaginative and strikingly balanced and superbly composed. And I think a real, really great way to sort of end our run around the, the spring show here. It, with a, a work like this and a wall like this, where you see an incredible variety of techniques, of artists, of different experiences who've been with the gallery for different periods of time, but it all sits together so beautifully because the quality is so high. We bring this, um, spring show, uh, walk around to an end here. Um, I want to end with firstly thanking you for watching this. I hope it's been entertaining and something that gives you great desire to come into the gallery and see. And of course, end finally with another tribute to Jennifer Zika, our sadly departed um, gallery manager. We miss her so much. This show was the final show that she curated before, her, before uh, she passed on. And it is a tribute to not only her quality as a selector of art and her curatorial eye, but also the person that she uh, is and will always remain being who has left such an impression on so many people. So I hope that we've hung it in a way to do tribute to Jennifer. Thank you so much to her. I learned so much from her myself. And this show is our tribute to her and our tribute to you. If you are interested in seeing any, any of these works, reserving them, or even coming in and renting and purchasing them, please get in touch uh, with us. Our contact information is on the Rental Sales Gallery website. Uh, please call us, please email us, and we'll set an appointment up. And we look forward to seeing you in the very near future. Thank you very much indeed. I hope you enjoyed this.